guys! Welcome back to another episode of Mail Art Monday. As you can see I've been playing already today. So today I want to show you something super fun. I'm so excited. It's starting to get cold here in Ohio and I don't know why but this is making me think of the Northern Lights. So we're gonna do some Northern Lights mail art today. Very very easy and so many ways you can go with this. So I'm going to show you this one. This one has a little bit more color in it. You can do a huge variety of colors. It's up to you. You can stick to something simple and monochromatic. So this is the first one I did. I will tell you a secret. Your inks, you want to make sure they have been refilled. You can see a huge difference in my trees from the bottom to the top. This is the first one I did. And my inks have been running low for a while. And for the majority of my stamping, it doesn't really matter. But for this, you want them to be very bold. You want your silhouettes to stand out above the color because what we're working with is a rather dark base. So please remember, it doesn't matter what black you use, just refill your inks. Um, today, I think I'm going to use my archival. I've got several blacks laying over here. It doesn't matter, just as long as you have a nice, bold color. The other thing you can do if you don't have a refill and you want to do this, if you do your base background, let it aside to dry, either use a heat tool or let it dry for a day, and then you can use black embossing powder, which would make this really, really awesome. And so it would stand out, but for the purposes, and it would actually give it a really nice texture. For the purposes of showing you guys today, I'm going to do it just with my ink. So let's start, this is your standard A2 envelope. So I'm just gonna grab a plain one here. And I think we're gonna go ahead and start with the green base, and then I might add a little more color. That's up to you, and I have a huge variety of inks today. We're going to start with some Memento Yellow and Dandelion. And, you know, I guess I reuse these, so you're just going to start layering the color on. And take it from off of the envelope to on. And hopefully I don't get too many fingerprints on this because I've been playing with this. Playing with several of these today, so baby wipes are going to be your best friend when you have layers of ink on. Start with your lightest colors and then work your way darker. Don't be afraid to go down towards the center of the envelope. You wanna leave the center a little bit light because remember, if you're gonna do this like I am for an envelope, you do need a space for the address. You can also stick a label on it, but for this, I feel like a label would take away from it. So that's, I mean, that's up to your preference. You can also mask off a space if you would like, but again, I kinda wanted it to blend in. And I'm a little bit hard on these things, so you'll see some little pieces coming off. Don't worry about that. And one thing with these I'll show you guys too. Because this is a base layer, you can use your, if you have these mini spongers, you can lay on heavy color with them. But you do end up with a little bit more streakiness to it. The base layers, I don't mind it as much. The top layers, I like to look really smooth. And even if you do that to get quick color, you can go back in and smooth it out a little bit. So, all right. So we've got some color there. Now I'm gonna go to the greens. For the other one, I used several different greens. I used some of the Memento in Pear Tart. I also used these Kaleida colors. And this one is Caribbean Sea. I love this. This has your greens and teals. It's hard to see in there. All in one, so I'm gonna use that see if I can. You can leave it smushed together or apart, it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to pick up a few colors off of that, pick up a little bit of the green, and just start pulling color towards the center. So I'm keeping this on camera for you guys. Remember, keep working from the off of the envelope on. It's going to give you the smoothest color blend. And you can pick up any colors you want through here. Like I'll pick up some blue and add it in now. And just kind of rotate through your colors. Remember leaving the, the center fairly light. So if you want to go to a heavier color, just kind of keep it up here towards the top. So you can see like I just did here. You guys, uh... And the backs of your envelopes with this technique, if you are as messy as I am, do not panic. They will have some fun color flare added to it. It's part of the fun. You get a little extra speckling on the back, it'll be good to add some stamping to later. So let's get 
these colors laid down really quickly so you guys can see this. Oops. And I'm just picking up a variety of colors from that kaleidoscope. Remember, you want to keep your darkest colors around the edges. So I want this because the view is going to be a night view of the sky. And I want to add stars, so I really want some darkness around those edges. And I might go back in with some of the darker Tim Holtz blues that I have that are a little more blue-blue versus this darks and teals. So it'll be less greens and turquoise. So right now, this kind of looks like a crazy mess. And for some reason, I've got some... I've got fingerprints everywhere, guys. So, let me clean this up a little bit here. So, let's take this, and I'm going to pull out, let's do some chipped sapphire distress ink. That's a little bit darker. Let me go to my blue sponge, and just go around your corners, and really darken those up. If you don't have a dark blue, you can always do black. Just be very sparing with it. And make sure it is a water base so that it will blend out or really juicy. I think with the memento, as long as it's juicy, you should be able to blend it out pretty well. But again, remember, it's going to be a lot darker. If you have purple, purple is also a great color to go in with this. But be careful, you don't want to make browns. So you have to be really careful when you're adding this in. So you can see it's starting to get some depth. I don't know if you guys can see that. And I want to make this end is a little longer than this end. One side I want to be a little shorter so that my trees can go up and then have the address and then the sky. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and add a little bit of Memento Bahama Blue. I don't know if you guys can see that. Just a tiny bit. It's a little bit more of a, a bright blue, which really doesn't We've got so much color laid down on here, it doesn't show up a whole lot. And like I said, you can add purples in, like I did on the one. And, you know what, let's go ahead and add a little bit of purple. I've got some Hampton Art. Alright, there's no... This is just one of the colors in it, it's purple. It doesn't say what color purple. And let's use the sponge here. And like I said, I don't want to do a whole bunch because it can turn kind of muddy. And I'm going to put it in the light spots. So, let's go here. And don't worry if you feel like your address space is getting too dark. I'll show you a trick to lighten that up as we go here. So once you stamp, you'll be able to get your address space back to nice and light. All right. There we go. I really like how that looks, so we're going to leave it like that. I'm going to get the extra ink off of here. At this point, if you have ink all over your fingers like I do, you want to use baby wipe and get as much of it off as you can because you're probably going to end up with fingerprints on your envelope if you're not careful. All right, so let's bring this in a little bit for you so you can see this a little better as I go. I only used two main stamps for this. I'm going to show you those here. These are both by Viva Las Vegas Stamps. So I have this set of trees and then these pine trees here. There are, I bought the whole plate. This is one of their newer plates. I think it was released in July. And if you follow the link below, you will see the direct link to the blog post. That will give you all of... I'm going to give you a link to the stamps individual and to that entire plate. So adjust this. Okay. So let's go ahead and start by stamping the big trees. I'm going to stick that on my block. And like I said, I'm going to use that archival ink here. And make sure your black is nice and juicy. You want it to be bold and stand above the other color. And let's decide... I think I'm going to actually have this as my... That is my bottom, actually. So I'm going to start by stamping the tree up a little high Oops. on the side, so give it some good pressure. There we go, so we got a nice stamped image. And you can see how nicely that stands out. And we're going to do, I'm going to do one down here so it kind of peaks right at this curve on here. So try to use the natural, the way your 
images naturally even come together on your envelope. You'll see kind of the patterns in your inking that maybe weren't on purpose. And actually it's a little higher here, so I'm gonna go to that peak. And I'm gonna go just below it so it looks like the light is shining over the trees. So. Oh, that looks really good there. And I'm taking this black off of my mat every time because I, I tend to make a huge mess. But you guys, if you've watched more than one of my videos, you probably have figured that out by now. All right. I want this one to be a little taller, so I am inking the whole stamp. And I'm going to go on the side, almost the whole stamp on with just a hair off. And what's wonderful about these being semi-silhouette stamps is you don't have to worry about them overlapping each other. They will blend in perfectly. So even though the trees overlap a little bit, there are darkness on the edge. Viva designed these so nicely to where they just blend really, really well. Now you'll notice I left this gap here. Because it's a forest, I don't want it to be completely, you know, the same. So that's where we're going to use the opposite trees here, these little pine trees. I'm going to stick those on our block. And there were several other ones that you could use with this set, and I really, I love so many of them. It was such a hard decision. I wanted to do a wide variety, and if you do a bigger envelope, I think it would be really neat to see this. Let's see if I think I want it a little taller. Okay, so these ones are nice and solid. Very nice. So that kind of even pulls closer to the front. So See if I can get that where the light shines because it's kind of wet. Because these trees are solid, they definitely make the front image so the light's coming from behind, which is really neat. And I actually like it just like that, so we're going to leave it. Other options for this would be, let me show you guys some of these. You guys could do this one with a little fence in the background that has several trees all in one. Um, here's the tree with tree swing. So you might see more variety of these later by me and I mean it's unbelievable the amount of options they have but let's start go back with this so now that we have this you see that we have the lighter space for the address so I can probably make this a little lighter to show you just to show you guys it doesn't need to be let me grab we'll just use the back side of the sponge I have so some really cheap studio G cracked something oh sorry chalk create tints so anyway you just get a little bit on your sponge and then just gently sponge it on top of it and because this is that chalk paint or chalk ink I should say be careful not to go on your trees because it will make them fade out and then you can pull it from that inside up and it fades out more so there you go so you'll see that now on mine, you'll see some of these little spots here. These are my traditional water spots that we love. Um, Tim Holtz inks are not the only ones that do that. So you can use it on any water-based ink. So I've just got a little bit of water here and I'm just gonna lightly get some little drips on here. And the thicker you put your ink down on your envelope, the better these spots are gonna show up. So. I just want to get several of them because we're going to create that stars in the background. All right. And you'll see that starting to emerge, which is really nice. Okay, let's get it back all the way on the camera for you guys. From there, I also have my jelly roll. Let's see if I can get that. There we go. Just the jelly roll pen, gel pen. Just go through and randomly draw a couple of spots. You want them vary in size, large and small. Don't forget to go off the edge. And remember, your postage stamp does not have to be in this corner. It's up to you. So if you think it looks better here, you can put it there. I will probably leave mine in this corner, but I'm going to go ahead and put stars everywhere just to see when I put the stamp down, what looks the best. So you'll see that I go ahead and just forget that you're even putting a stamp on it right now and kind of go crazy with it. Have fun. Don't forget to put a few down here where your address is going to be, maybe behind the trees. 
And we're going to go back and add some detail on these trees to help them really, really pop out. So before we do that, though, go to back to your Studio G or whatever white ink you have, if you have the stays on or anything. I've got just a plain Q-tip here. Take a dip it in lightly and just sponge it on to give you a couple bigger stars. This will give you little clusters of stars. So you can see the sky is just really coming together here. I'll put some down there. All right, I like that. Now we're going to go back to our jelly roll pen. Go along the edges. Let's see if I can bring this in for you guys. So you'll see these tree edges now. Just kind of go lightly along the edges and maybe add a couple dots in the branches of the tree. And this will really help us to pull out as if light was shining off of these. And it'll make it stand out from the background. You want it to stay dark as if it's a silhouette. But you want to give visual interest as well. This is a step you don't have to do if you decide you don't want to. But as you can see here, it just really pops this forward. If you want to add a little bit on the edges of these trees, it doesn't have to be, you know, very detailed. You can just throw a couple scribbles down just to make it look like the light is shining through. Move that over for you guys. And I do this on pretty much all of the, the base images. I feel like it helps pull the top and the bottom part of the envelope together. But it's optional. It doesn't really take away from the image not to have it either. I just, I don't know. I really like the white. I think I'm addicted to this white gel pen. While you guys are, if you guys are working along with us, I will tell you, I think I want to do a giveaway. There's so many of these envelopes. I'm having such a fun time. I would really like to share some. So if you guys would like to receive one of these in your, in your mailbox, if you go to follow the link below to the Viva Las Vegas stamp blog, you can enter by leaving a comment there. And I'm going to see if I can figure out how to add one of those little boxes where if you share it, it'll give you more entries. Um, but for now, if you don't see that box, if you just post where you shared it in a link to whether you shared it on Facebook or YouTube or wherever. And then I have a second blog post later this month and I will announce the winner then. So if you guys like this and would like to receive some mail art in your own mailbox, just comment below and comment on the Viva Las Vegas blog and let me know. And then hopefully follow along and you'll see if you win. All right, there we go, guys. So this is the main part of what I did. Now, just to add one more touch of the super Aurora Borealis feel, I wanted a little extra shimmer. So I have this Heidi Swap Color Shine in Chartreuse. It's like a green metallic. There you guys can see it. So same thing, I shake it up. Take a little bit off of your end here and just lightly Click it onto your envelope and you can add as much or as little as you want or not at all. Any shimmer spray, and this is a green, so it's really pretty, It'll give you that effect. So let's see if you can see the shimmer from that. It's still really wet. Let me go back to the one that we, that's dry. So on here, you can kind of see this coppery, shimmery part. So there you guys go. Super easy doesn't take hardly any time at all. And once you get going, you can make several of these to send out your Christmas cards. You can use them for anything. This would totally brighten up somebody's mailbox. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you try it, I would love to see what you guys do. Um, I hope that inspires you guys. Thanks. And make sure to stop back to see if you've won. Have a great day, guys. Thanks.